So I'm going to use this to actually say what I think about MNT, which okay. I've been <laughs> waiting to do for, <laughs> for a long time. Uh, so I think there are two parts to it. The, the emphasis on fiscal policy as being a useful tool, I buy. Uh, not, no, this doesn't make them unique. I mean, most, most of us would buy that. The notion that you can finance this by money is wrong. It's plain wrong. And we do it in the US, but what does the Fed do? It basically buys bonds and it issues reserves. Now, that's money, but there's interest on reserves. So in effect, if you consolidate the government between the Treasury and the Fed, it's just a transformation. And basically, they are it, what they're doing is issuing debt, right? So in that context, they're not issuing money. If they issued money at zero rate, right, then we would have hyperinflation. But we're basically issuing a new form of debt, which is bank reserves, which is basically costly to the Treasury and the Fed taken together. So my view is you can do fiscal policy, you can finance it by debt, but the notion that for some magical reasons you can do it for money is wrong. There's one exception to this, which is Japan, which is when you add zero, debt and money are the same thing. And so you pretend you're issuing money, right? But in effect, it's as if you were issuing debt. The day on which Japan has to basically pay a positive interest rate on bonds, it will have to pay a positive interest rate on the money. Yeah. Otherwise, people will not hold it or there'll be hyperinflation. So MMT is right for half and wrong for the other. So how do we know which half we're going to be in? If we go back to zero rates, then indeed, in this case, we will be able to finance the deficit for money. It okay. will be Japan. All right. <laughs>